Okay, can I have your attention, please? Um, we are now starting the second part of the opening ceremony. Well, actually, I was not asked to MC the second part till the last minute. So, well, I don't have to run the whole ceremony. I will just uh, fill up the gap occasionally. Even if I make mistakes, please forgive me. Um, well, I'm um, first supposed to uh, have this person on the podium. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, actually, Evan mentioned uh, mentioned uh, the Jeju Symposium back in 1999, and I was attending that symposium as a student. And that's the first time I knew about Evan and her beautiful work. And it took me more than 20 years to learn how to say her name right. So, <laughs> Evin Van Dishok, please. All right, continued good afternoon to everybody. Uh, we are now, now moving to the second part of the opening ceremony, one in which we traditionally honor a number of people for their outstanding contributions to our field. We start with the Gruber Foundation Prizes. The IEU has had the honor and the pleasure to partner with the Gruber Foundation since 2000, with the joint goal to promote the science of cosmology and other branches of astronomy at the highest possible levels. And this is done most importantly, most significantly, uh, by the prestigious Gruber Cosmology Prize. But in addition, and just as important, the Gruber Foundation fellowships stimulate the up and coming young stars in our field. Our deep thanks go, as always, to the founders, Peter and Patricia Gruber, for making this possible. And I now welcome warmly the Gruber Foundation Executive Director, Sarah Reba to the podium. Okay. Ah. Welcome to the announcement of the 23rd Gruber Cosmology Prize, honoring a leading cosmologist, astronomer, astrophysicist, or scientific philosopher for theoretical, analytical, or conceptual discoveries leading to fundamental advances in our understanding of the universe. On behalf of all of us at the Foundation, we are pleased to be here in Busan to announce this prize at the 31st General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union. And thank you for your warm welcome. The Cosmology Prize is presented annually in conjunction with the International Astronomical Union, whose support and partnership have guided our efforts from the earliest days. It is my pleasure to introduce Teresa Lago, immediate past general secretary of the IAU, who will say a few words about this fruitful uh, collaboration. The IAU is pleased to have collaborated with the Group Cosmology Prize since the prize inception. The IAU has an advisory role in the constitution of the Selection Advisory Board and as part of our collaboration, we are fortunate to receive an annual grant to be awarded to postdoctoral fellows from around the world so they can pursue education and research at a center of excellence in their fields. Since 2001, the fellowship has been awarded to 31 very promising young scientists from Algeria, Chile, Poland, Taiwan, India, Spain, Italy, Israel, Greece, Belgium, the Netherlands, the Russian Federation, Mexico, the United Kingdom, Colombia, Egypt, and the United States. From 2020 onwards, the annual grant received by the IAU has been substantially increased to $75,000 per year, allowing us to select 
a larger number of awardees. And now I call the 22, 2022 uh, fellows, Itai Lineal, I call the him to the, to the stage, please. And you can see, I call uh, Kuniang Lee, she's not present, and I'm sorry, but I'm sure she will be observing. And, and P. Yushi Sharda. And I would like to have a quick view of the slides on their research and their photo, if possible, so that we know what they're doing about. Well, it was on stellar explosions and the orbits. Uh, it's the, this is the last one. I can start with him. Piyushi Sharda researched on the role of metals in tracing multi-scale structure. Oops. <laughs> multi-scale structure formation in galaxies in the early universe. And Itai, as I was saying, works on stellar explosions and the orbits of stars near supermassive black holes, binaries, aiming at improving the understanding of the coevolution between massive black holes and galaxies and their origin. And I will present you Congratulations on your fellowships and thank you, Professor Lago. The Gruber International Prize Program, established in 2000, recognizes achievements and discoveries that produce fundamental shifts in human knowledge and culture. While we are here to honor the achievements of Frank Eisenhower, let me mention that the Genetics Prize will be presented at the Germ Cells Conference at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory on October 8th and on November 13th at the annual Society of the, of the Society for Neuroscience, the Neuroscience Prize will be presented to Larry Abbott, Emery Neil Brown, Terence Sejnowski, and Haim Sumplinski. Please note that nominations to the 2023 Gruber Prizes will be open until December 15th, and that we encourage nominations that reflect the breadth of the fields and the diversity of those working within them. Before we return to cosmology, I would like to acknowledge our co-founders, Peter and Patricia Gruber, whose combined vision and leadership established this international prize program and whose care in doing so gave it the legs to stand on its own. Peter has passed on, but Pat is still the heart of the program and is a lifetime member of the board of directors. Returning to cosmology, we are proud of our illustrious laureate roster and pleased to be adding to it. The 2022 prize recipient was chosen by a distinguished selection advisory board. We deeply appreciate the knowledge, commitment, and enthusiasm that these advisors bring to the judging process. And let me now invite a member of this selection board, Paul Ho, to present the official citation and introduce the scientific accomplishments of our recipient. So this is to show sometimes poor astronomers do make a little money. 
Not a little, a lot of money. So uh, let me read the official citation for you. Uh, the Gruber Foundation is pleased to present the 2022 Cosmology Prize to Frank Eisenhower uh, for his innovative design and construction of the gravity instrument, a near-infrared interferometric beam combiner for the ESO Very Large Telescope Interferometer, interferometer in Chile. Gravity has opened up near-infrared interferometry to help us understand a wide range of astrophysical and cosmologically important phenomena, including black holes and exoplanets. Eisenhower also led the construction of SPIFI and Symphony, the first adaptive optics integral field spectrometer on an eight-meter class optical telescope. These instruments enable the detection of general relativity effects close to a black hole by defining the orbit of the star S2 around the galactic center massive black hole Sag A star with unprecedented and exquisite angular resolution. So this is our 2022 prize winner, Frank Eisenhower, who uh, is on his way here at the moment and he'll be here tomorrow uh, to present his lecture. So I just want to say a few more words about how important this particular result and uh, uh, science and instruments that have been produced by Frank. Um, in my mind, this is a real breakthrough in instrumentation work. And it, it probably uh, has provided the best results that we have ever gotten from optical infrared interferometry, right? So um, these experiments are actually much better than the Nobel Prize winning work uh, that Genzo and Getz had gotten for the uh, orbit of uh, S2. And the reason is that you know, it has this very exquisite high resolution that they have achieved, two to four milli arc second, with 10 to 100 micro arc second uh, relative astrometry accuracy, right? These are really exquisite uh, results. And these sets of uh, extremely fine delay lines and the uh, AO and phase tracking and fringe tracking allowed them to measure the 15-year orbit of S2 with very high precision at the uh, closest encounter point when the orbit went around Sag A star. And as a result of that, they were actually able to measure the GR effect not only in the orbit motion, but in fact by spectroscopy on the motions of the gas around the, uh, the star, the stellar motions. Uh, so, in my mind, you know, these experiments are so fine that they can actually see the uh, inner stable circular orbit, uh, the last point around the black hole. Uh, they can see a hot spot there that's orbiting at a speed of three tenths of the speed of light. I mean, this is just tremendous work, right? And the precession of the S2 orbit itself of 12 arc minutes per orbit that they have measured is also have implication potentially on the distribution of dark matter. So in the citation, we also mentioned that they do the exoplanet work and they can actually um, do the substructures in the uh, broadline regions in uh, external galaxies, active galaxies. And these things I think are tremendous uh, uh, in the future for the field of optical in, uh, interferometry. So we're very pleased to present this award, especially for these scientific results, but also as a recognition of how important instrumentation work is in our field. So I pass it back to you, Sarah. So this is usually the moment when we would officially award the prize, but because Frank Eisenhower won't be here until later tonight, we'll pin his prize tomorrow before his lecture, which is at 12.15 p.m. in this room um, a new era of high angular resolution astronomy. So I hope you'll join us for that. And this concludes our presentation. Okay, again, may I invite Evan Van Dishock <laughs> to the stage okay. uh, for the IAU ODE Prize Awards. I get to see your name a lot this evening. <laughs> Okay, good. Let's see if we can get the first slides. Let's. Good, yes. So, 
The strategic plan 2020-2030 has already been mentioned. And one of the goals there was actually to diversify the portfolio of the prizes that we have as the ICU. We celebrate research, we celebrate excellence in research, and we do that both at the senior and at the junior level. That's fantastic. But there are also these other aspects of being an astronomer, the our obligation that we all have uh, to society. Uh, and that is basically to also engage in outreach, in development, and in education. And so I'm very pleased that we actually are able here to present the inaugural ODE prizes, ODE, as we'll explain in a moment. Uh, the uh, winners have already been announced on the AIU uh, press release uh, a few weeks ago, but now they are here in person to receive their awards. So please welcome to the stage uh, the winners of the uh, ODE prizes, uh, Michel Gabaldi, uh, Jerry Bonnell, uh, Robert Nimerov, and Rosa Doran. Please come here up to the stage. Outreach, development, education, that makes the word ode. So what is actually an ode? Here, it's written by John Keats. It's actually, as you see over here, it's actually somebody who did something in praise of something, someone. Some ode celebrate great deeds, while others honor great people or concepts. And that's exactly what we're going to do here today with these prizes. So ode to our winners. You're all familiar with ode. Ode to a nightingale from Keats, ode to joy from Beethoven. Yeah, always hear that during the Olympic uh, Games. Ode to life, ode to earth, ode to a moon, and here indeed ode to also now our winners. So we chose these three areas because they are really uh, complementary. Uh, one of them is outreach, that's really uh, public commu astronomy communication. Uh, but you can also think of media relations, of planetariums, of storytelling, uh, all that fun fo follows under uh, uh, outreach. Then there is the, the other part that is development, really the use of astronomy as a tool for development and capacity building, and especially in the underserved areas. And then there's education, which is really the formal astronomy training at uh, undergraduate school and uh, postgraduate levels. So we set as terms of the eligibility, individuals, small groups, organizations, you do not have to be an IEU member in order to be nominated for one of these awards. It can be a lifetime award, but it can also be a major one-off that is possible. And we really want to give also consideration to people who are less known but have also performed excellent service in these domains of the awards. So we actually had three uh, selection committees, one for outreach, development, and education, and they are chaired, as you see over here. And then there was a super committee that basically consisted of an independent chair, myself, and uh, these three chairs. And each, each of these committees consisted of three to four members uh, with membership from across the globe. And it was really fantastic to see both the nominations that we got from across the globe and the participation in the selection also from people across the globe. So, without further ado, uh, let me say a few more words about each of these uh, uh, prize winners. The first one is Astronomy Picture of Today in Outreach. Um, that was really, uh, well, it rose to the top very quickly uh, because uh, I think all of you are familiar with Astronomy Picture of Today. It has been around for more than 25 years. It's now available in more than 20 languages, close to 30. So this is also an, a recognition and a shout out to the entire uh, Astronomy Picture of Today team. Uh, so many volunteers across the, the world. It's seen by millions each day. It's used in classrooms, primary, secondary, university courses, contributions from professionals and from amateur astronomers. And just looking at APOD over the last few days, I mean, I saw the beautiful JWST image, brand new. I mean, I hadn't even seen it before it came on, uh, on APOD. Uh, and then, you know, beautiful astrophotography, the North Celestial Tree just a few days ago. Fantastic image uh, taken from China. And then there are also some from Korea, like you see here, the Leonids. Uh, and the interesting part is that all of them have a story to tell. 
the texts are really fantastic underneath each of these images, and that's really what, uh, what, uh, what does it. So this is really an, a truly an outreach project that reaches out to the entire uh, world, uh, having now been viewed by, by billions of, of people. So it's my real pleasure then to hand these awards to Robert Nimerov and Jerry Burnell. And <laughs> Wow. Well, we took a, a simple idea and, and tried to make it work. Uh, we thank uh, the power of NASA and the power of astronomers and astrophysicists and astrophotographers all, all over the world. Um, so just thank you. I, I would just, I will echo Bob's sentiments. Tak gam samnida. Thanks. So beautiful. Good. After the O comes the D. So we go to development. And uh, the winner here is uh, Michelle Gibardi, who is well known for her very wide and very sustained contributions to using astronomy as a tool for capacity building over many, many years. She has done it in many different ways, uh, most notably through hands-on teaching in developing countries, through the well-known EZIA schools. Uh, that the IEU has been active in since 1967, but also through the Astrolab workshops that she co-developed and that she uh, uh, does in, in South America, Africa, and again, uh, especially in the developing world. And what is important here is that she not just teaches astronomy, no, she teaches creative thinking, research skills, methodologies, because those are the skills that you need, not just in astronomy, but that you can also use in society, and that is really the uh, astronomy for development part uh, that you see here. So, Michelle, is that for an idea? I would say that I feel deeply honored receiving this prize, and I accept it with great emotion. I wish to associate to this event the numerous colleagues with whom I have been developing so many projects in this domain. Thank you to them. Thank you, Erwin. Thank you, the Union. And uh, finally, we come to the E, the education. And here we honor uh, Rosa Doran for her innovative, inspirational, inclusive astronomy education. Again, a very sustained effort worldwide for more than three decades. Uh, she has initiated, co-funded, uh, find, find funding for it, and then also developed the material and gone out everywhere across the world for the teaching. Uh, both large and small scale projects, uh, reaching thousands of children, but also thousands of teachers, and that's the important part, through Nucleo, through the Galileo teacher training program, all fantastic. She's a real powerhouse, and I've seen that in person when we were on Principe Island uh, together, <laughs> and we went uh, to all the, the, the schools there. So, uh, fantastic, Rosa. Uh, as one uh, nominator wrote, said Rosa's uh, uh, motto is really to change the world through astronomy education.
one, one final applause for them and please come to their brief talks. There is a set of ODE talks Thursday afternoon from 16.50 to 17.30 in room 205. And remember, the next uh, round of these prizes is at the next GA. They go with the GA. So only two years from now, 2024 nominations due in early 2024. Thank you so much. Okay, congratulations again. Uh, next, uh, let's invite Jose Miguel Espinoza for the IAU PhD Awards. Okay. This is my turn to give the PhD prize winners 2022. And there is a prize for each division and a prize at large. For division A is Chris Hamilton from the UK. Division B is Francisco Javier Bailén Martínez from Spain. <clears throat> Division C is David Barrado Namasquez, also from Spain. <clears throat> Division D is Ricardo Azcodia from Germany. <clears throat> Division E is Suvik Bose from Norway. <clears throat> Division F is Megan Mansfield from the USA. From Division G is Karim El Badri from the USA. From Division H is Anirudh Chiti from the USA. From Division J is CG Q from the USA. And the PhD prize at large goes to Retika Joshi from India. And you will get your credential in the division days. Thank you very much. And there are some honorable mentions. Division C 
Ricky Said Salimpur from Australia, Division D, Division D is Benjamin Crinquant from France. Division E is Vincent Rouen from Belgium. Division F is Chloe Fischer from Switzerland. And Rafael Luque Ramirez from Spain. Division H is Rebecca Levy from the USA. And finally, Division J is Martina Schurilinka from Germany. Congratulations to all our winners. And that concludes our opening ceremony. Please join us for the reception just outside and have a great GA.